a performance that put us in the Champions League semi-final. And all the preparation has been uh, to achieve that. And, um, and we have earned it. We have earned it for, for 10 months and everything that we did last season um, to start that journey in the Champions League after so many years. And, uh, and tomorrow I have an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. Okay. John Cross from the Mirror. Hello, Mikel. What, what's Hi. the atmosphere been like since, since Sunday? Is it a dressing room that's immediately determined to kind of put the record straight and then embrace this challenge? What's it been like? I'll throw the game away and the one that we played a few days ago because regardless of that result, uh, it's going to have no impact in what's going to happen tomorrow. Refocus and, um, and start to build um, the confidence, the trust, the understanding of the performance that we have to put tomorrow um, to beat them and, and be through in the time. Okay, Sammy Mockwell from the Mail. Hi. Is your play is to take the emotion out of the occasion, or is it a case that you actually want them to use that kind of raw emotion to thrive in, 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 in that hot bed of pressure? Emotion is needed in football, is, is tweaking it, tweaking, tweaking, and, and touching the right button in the right time uh, for the team to be always stable, be hyped when it has to be hyped. And I think we did that really well in London because uh, after going, scoring the first goal, we had a game that we had a big chance to score the second one. And then suddenly in five, ten minutes, they are ahead. And we were really controlled, really mature, not to throw everything away in that moment, find our rhythm, our moment, to score a really good goal. And the reaction of the team was straight away to, to try to score the third one. Ian from the BBC. Mikel, many of your players haven't been involved at this stage of the competition before, yet Bayern have lost their last three quarter-finals of the Champions League, so you could say that they're scarred by failure. How do you approach it and how do you alleviate the pressure from your players for such a big game? Well, as you said, uh, most of our players, they haven't experienced um, a night like this and, um, and it's going to be the first one and uh, they are super motivated, um, they are prepared, they feel confident. And it's something that tomorrow we're going to have to show um, against an opponent, as you said, that have this experience, um, but we want to make it happen. Mark from PA. Hi. A few times this season about how you and this team changed recent history, you go to the Etihad, go to Anfield, where you've had poor records. We've had a poor record here as well, but do you, do you and the players look at those performances and ending those sort of runs as an example of what you can do here tomorrow? We have to change it, and the opportunity comes there. There's a lot of things that we can, we can do um, to write that story very differently tomorrow. We know that, and, um, and it's going to be about putting a very, very strong performance, collective and individually, to end the right to, to win the semi-final. James from ESPN. Hi, Mikel. Um, do you think you can go for it here, or, or are we likely to see a more kind of disciplined performance like City away, where you try and stay in the game and, and, and it's more sort of cagey? Well, depending, depending as well in, in their approach, uh, for sure I want my team to be ourselves. And regardless of the stadium, sometimes you want to do certain things, the opponent doesn't allow you to do it, uh, but we want very clear how we're going to play the game, where we want to play that game, and what is going to give us the best chance to win it. Gentlemen in the glasses. Hi, Mikel. Um, in Germany, everybody's talking about Xabi Alonso and Bayer Leverkusen and how they are dominating the league and were able to dominate Bayern. I would like to know, did you analyze Xabi's Leverkusen in order to prepare for the game tomorrow? And did you have the chance to speak to Xabi to ask him for some advices? Well, first of all, big congratulations to Xavi and Granit because he was our player as well. So happy for them and very impressed for what they've done. And uh, I just I congratulate him, obviously, because we are good friends and because I'm really happy for them. But that's a different story. Uh, we don't face uh, their competition regularly and it's, um, it's a Champions League tie, so the game is very, very different. Sam from the Telegraph. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Just to ask you, I can, about this slightly weird situation that seems to be brewing with Alex Zinchenko and, and the fans and some of them even seem to jeer when he came off at the weekend and it seems to be a thing that's sort of bubbling away. Are you aware of that? What, what do you make of it and what would you say to any fans who doubt Alex? Uh, we love Alex. Uh, that is giving us so much. He has given us a lot and um, he's a player with, with different qualities, um, with an unbelievable courage to play football in any circumstances. 
And uh, as we always demand, to stay with our players, give them support, because for sure they're going to perform better. Simon from the Standard. Mikel, when, you, when you've got people now saying this is the point where Arsenal faded last year, this is the point where they fade away, is that something that you, you block out from the team so they don't hear that noise? Or do you say, look, this is what people are saying about you, proves them wrong? I cannot control that. I cannot take their phones, their TVs away, the people around them. Um, I lost, we didn't lose anything last year because we didn't win anything. And first of all, you have to win it and then maybe you can lose it. Uh, what we had is an unbelievable journey against the best team in the world um, here and in Europe in the last seven years. And this is where we want to be. And we're not satisfied, we want to be better. And that's the level that we are competing with. So we'll try again our best till the last day to try to bring those cups and, and be successful. Mr. Tuchel, can you tell us an update? What about Leroy Sané? Is he at disposal? If so, how hard is it going to be? And what about the other players? What about Neuer? Manu can play and Leroy can play. He has to bite on his teeth. And Serge and Kingsley, they can't. They are not available. And so uh, Leroy has to bite on his teeth. Mr. Tuchel, the experience of the first leg, what is the key out of your view? We need everything, the same, same ded dedication, passion, efforts by the team, tactical discipline, the same one. And uh, as in the first leg, we need a little bit more actually, this would be normal. The precondition is clear, the winner will succeed, the loser will be out, eliminated, and we want to win this game. We hope for the same atmosphere, but this time for us, as the fans in London managed to do it, a unique atmosphere that they created there and uh, that can actually push the team and it's extremely important tomorrow that each fan comes with their readiness to push to push the team tomorrow night to support the team uh, we need this extraordinary and the support the extraordinary support to be able to give this extra percentage we need these extra percentage against uh, arsenal to win against them thomas after the match against Cologne, we discussed about the left back. You said Guerrero or Maseraui, one of the two will play tomorrow. Do you have a decision taken already? And the second question, Alexander Pavlovic, he is back after his injury. What do you think about him? Well, Alex, after the match against Darmstadt, he hasn't been into rhythm, so you could see it, you could, and he could feel it as well in his last match now. So the trend is maybe to have them in the team, but we will keep the both midfield players that played in the first leg. But it's good to have Alex in the back, um, and left back is the same as I said before. We will take the decision after the final training this afternoon. We have the possibility today to train tactically. We have one day more to get prepared. That's fine, that's good for us. Yesterday we trained already tactically. We'll do the same today. And then I have to talk to Mus to see how he is feeling. Since he hasn't had a normal process he was injured he played then again he also had to bite on his teeth and physically he is not in top form normally the first match is then the easier one if you come back and the one who played in cologne that might be a little bit easier after the fatigue of their first match um, to get over it and so to have this one day extra for preparation helps us as well. And then we'll take the final decisions this evening. 
I think um, everyone is ready. Like you said, I think we can use it as a reaction. Um, it's a big opportunity for us. Um, it's on the biggest stage, so uh, everyone wants to show um, what we are capable of. And um, yeah, there's no better way to do it tomorrow. Simon? Leandro, just when you've got you know people in the title race sort of saying Manchester City have, have won it, does when you have people writing you off motivate the squad even more? Um, I don't think we need anyone to motivate us. Um, I think our group is um, experienced enough um, to deal with those kind of situations. We had it last year as well. Um, everyone still believes in it. We are still tight. Um, and yeah, six games left in the Prem and we, we want to win them all. Sam, just down here. Hi, you mentioned last year. How, how different do you think the team and the squad is now compared to a year ago? Um, yeah, first of all, I would say more experienced. Uh, we had that one last year. Um, and yeah, we have just such a good squad um, with quality players who can decide games um, as well. <laughs> Last couple of weeks, months, how we defended uh, our goal as well. So I think just in general, we, we evolved and yeah, we were, we're still in a really good moment. Kaya? Um, hi Leo, um, you mentioned the experience from last season in the title race, but at this stage of the Champions League, for most of the squad it's their, their first time experiencing it. I wonder, what have you learned across the course of the competition, what did you learn from the first leg? And also as one of the more experienced players in the, in the group, do you feel sort of a need to, to help the younger players through it, through the, sort of the difficult periods in this, this run? Um, that every game is tough. Um, yeah, we have experienced it uh, in the group stage uh, as well as Porto and last game. But I think we showed uh, character as well, especially last game um, where we came back. And obviously, yeah, it's a, it's a top side where we're playing against and uh, they can hurt you in many different ways. And um, we need to be uh, on, top of, on top of our game. Your goal last week was, I think it was the sixth goal you scored coming off the bench. That's more than any other player in Europe's top five leagues this season. It's almost, because of that, a view of maybe you're better as an impact player. As a, as a you know, player yourself, is that, is that a tag you would appreciate or would you much rather kind of be seen you know, more as a, someone who, can, who makes more of an impact from the start? Um, I think I've done it both from the start and as an impact. Obviously, it's nice that you can bring that to the team. Um, even when you're on the bench, you can come in and help the team to get goals. And um, that's nice for me, but I think I can do either uh, start. I think I showed myself as well. But um, like I said, I'm always ready to help the team Is it as a sub or as a starter. Um, for me personally, it's just about trying to help the team in every situation, whether it's in the Bundesliga or the Champions League. I think we have a great opportunity to, tomorrow night in front of our fans to you know, uh, keep the season alive and keep some hope uh, amongst the fans and uh, hope that we can achieve something special, even though it's not been uh, the greatest season. So, um, yeah, for me personally, it's just about going there tomorrow and, and trying to do what you know, I've been doing and, and, and scoring goals and, and help the team in, in any situation possible. OK, thanks. Next one, right side, yeah. Hello, uh, I was just going to ask you, you've obviously, it's not gone quite as well as you'd hope this season, but when you look around the dressing room, the pedigree and the sort of the experience of those players that have won major trophies, including the Champions League, how much confidence does that give you? How much does belief... You know, does that sort of kind of really sort of fire you up? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we've got, we have got a lot of experience and a lot of players who have played in big games, in big moments. And, uh, you know, it's no secret here that the club you know, set out to win the Champions League uh, every season. So there is an expectation. And I think if you look at our performances this year, there's been a, a different type of performance in the Champions League. I feel like we've been to, maybe together more. We've been uh, willing to do more on the pitch uh, defen de defensively and uh, in other aspects. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a time to, to raise our game. It's a time for you know me and the players who have been in big situations, pressure situations, to, to step up and, and be counted. And like I said, it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. It's going to be, um, yeah, a, 
quarter-final Champions League night, so uh, there's a lot of expectation, but I think there's a good belief amongst the squad that you know we can uh, we can achieve something tomorrow. Next one, third row, please. Yeah. Hello, Harry. Uh, being part of now Bundesliga, and how do you rank uh, the Bundesliga compared to the Premier League? And also, it's very special for you because if you help Bayern advance, you make it more difficult for Premier League to get the extra spot in the Champions League. And who is in the fifth place? Tottenham. You would make it more difficult for Tottenham to uh, advance to Champions League next. So how do you rate yeah, that? I, I don't really know how to, uh, how to answer that. But uh, no, of course, uh, I think the Bundesliga has been uh, a great experience for me so far. I think you've seen, like I touched on that, Leverkusen. I've had an amazing year, not just in the Bundesliga, but in Europe. So, you know, you've got some top, top teams in, in this competition. Um, yeah, in terms of me, obviously, I can't focus on what, what may or may not happen in, in the Premier League. All I can do is uh, try and perform in every performance that, that Bayern Munich play and, and try and help us finish as high at the league as possible. And, and that for us in the Bundesliga is to finish second place. So, um, yeah, what, what will be will be. I can't control other things outside of that. Um, but as a whole, you know, I'm really enjoying it here, uh, playing in the Bundesliga. Right behind, yeah, please. Hi, Harry. Hi. Obviously, it's still, still quite new for you here, new country, new league, new club, but how much responsibility and pressure are you putting on yourself to, to lead the team tomorrow night as the sort of the new face of Bayern, if you were? Yeah, I think, you know, where I'm at in my career and the stage I'm, I'm at, people expect uh, a certain level from me in, in, in every game that, that I play, and obviously that comes with goals and assists, but also just an all-round performance and using you know, my leadership and, and my experience that I've had throughout my career so far to, to help the team. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I always expect a lot from myself. I always uh, scrutinise myself more than anyone else could. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can put in you know, a, a big performance tomorrow night. And uh, that's not just with scoring goals, but also just the all-round play. It's going to be a difficult game, as it was in, in the away leg that we played. Uh, so I'll be ready for, for anything that may come tomorrow. Look at, at what they've, they've got to come. They don't yet know as a group if they, can, if they can do that between now and the end of the season and get themselves over the line. Manchester City will have that same feeling that, that you described in the Manchester United dressing room of going, we've been here before, we've got this, we know that we are capable of doing this. And not only are we capable of doing it, we have done it. Mm. We've, we've done it in the past. But I like, I like the fact that they've kind of got a young team and they're growing together. The problem is they probably need two or three of older guys, even if they don't start, just within the dressing room, to help them say, <clears throat> look, you know, keep doing what you're doing or believe or have a bit of confidence, don't lose confidence. I just saw yesterday, the second, first half I thought they were brilliant, they should have been ahead. Second half, when Villa started to play, I thought they showed signs of, maybe they were fatigued from the buying mm -hmm. game, I just thought they showed, do we believe? It didn't look mm -hmm. like they believed as much as they did maybe a few weeks ago. So I do think having some older guys, we always had experienced players around us mm. that helped you, right? Didn't they? In moments Absolutely. when you, were, you weren't at your best yeah. to, just to, to, to guide you along. Yeah, whatever it is, even if it's dropped back for fight, like obviously Tony was um, a very experienced guy. He was the one, Boldy. We had a lot of players on the pitch who would to make, you know, call you back, right? And then we have to put the, what Tony would say, the tin hats on for 10 minutes or something. So as you get through a phase, you get through a phase because I think that um, it, with, the, with the Arsenal game, there was definitely a phase where once they didn't score, it needed a regroup. OK, let's just calm down. Let's not, let's not rush everything forward, which I thought they'd done against Bayern. I thought that with Bayern, almost played like they had to do it in that game. Yeah. So going for it. And I think in this game, because they were keeping the pressure on the crowd or behind, it was starting to happen. Um, and I thought, again, they, they kind of they slipped up, they got broken through, and, you know what I mean, they, they, they got beaten in the end. And, I just, I just found it the second half, especially, where no one was saying, right, we need to, we need the five minutes where we need to stay solid so as we can get regroup. Yeah, because the second goal actually summed that up. You take a draw in that game. Yes, a draw is a great draw, but the second goal can happen. Smith Rowe's chasing yeah. Watkins on his own as a number ten, who's probably not the quickest. Mm. You need to be in shape. Yeah. You know, you need to have somebody there. And Wrighty makes a great point. I thought they dominated Bayern to start the game. Raya comes out, makes a poor decision to come out off cross his line, and it kind of affected the whole team. Mm. If they just play a little bit deeper and not as open, I think they could find a way to ha hang in there against yes. Villa and get a, a draw is an amazing point, but obviously losing, and that's where you've got to learn. 
If you can't win, don't lose. Yes, exactly. You know, and, that, and that's a really important lesson to learn for a young team. And, and as much as we're seeing that, that tension from the players on the pitch, are we seeing it in Arteta as well? Because he's capable of, of passing that message out to the, to the players to say, look, you just need, whether it's a, a period of five, ten minutes of just being solid, even in terms of the, the team selection. I know you were talking about the, the bench. He, he played all his cards yeah. with, the, with the starting lineup. Did he leave himself anywhere to go. There may be signs in terms of his management that it, it's a tense, pressured environment. Um, you know what, I think he would probably think that he'd have learned from last season in the way that they've been playing up to this point. So I don't think coming... It's possible that he has learned and still has... Yeah, but may, more to maybe, Kels, but what I'm saying is, is that when you look at what's happened last season and uh, they're still at this point of the season and still, what, we're two points in, in it. I think that the way they played in the first half I'm not sure that he could go in and say too much other than we've got to try, let's take these chances, let's finish this off so as we can be more comfortable in the game. And then once it started to get away from you in, in the second half, then unfortunately with all these, uh, you know, he's, he's on the side, whatever you want to say, it's very hard to get through when the players themselves, like you said, they felt like they lost belief for a bit because they were in a play, like, like what it looked like with Bayern. They looked like a bit where, what's going on? Against Bayern, they found it again, and then they scored the equaliser. They didn't seem to do it in this game against Villa. They couldn't find it again to, to, to get themselves, like, reset to go again. And that was what was worrying, because that's what they're going to need at this stage of the season. They're going to need to be able to find, OK, it's not going well, so let's make sure we tight. And it didn't happen in that game. But even, I've seen quite a few sort of articles pointing to the, the levels that you have to reach to win a, a Premier League title now. And even those great... Sir Alex Ferguson sides at Manchester United would lose games mm. across the course of a season. Every game lost, and I appreciate at this stage of the season there's a sort of added um, and, and added uh, effect of that. But when you when you lose games across the course of the season, it's okay. That's we move on from this. Here, everything is magnified. But if, can I say with, with United? It'd be interesting to see when United... Were... I, can't, I can't see that very well. <laughs> <laughs> when you look I'm at, your, at United in those. Later stages, when you get past, when you get into February, like, you're not seeing United and that lose too many games there. I what? think it's the doom and Sorry. gloom, mm. though, for so many fans. And I, I know what you mean, Kelly, on that. It's like, for Arsenal fans, I think you could see that pressure. When that first goal went in, yeah. the belief evaporated. People were leaving the stadium. It's like that was the moment where the season ended. Jesus. And I think that's where it feels doom and gloom. Whereas if you're Manchester United, Manchester United fans at that peak Fergie time probably thought, we still had something go. left in us. Yeah. But I think Arsenal, that desperation for it, everything is so intense, whether you win or lose, and that's when it, when it does go badly. I think it goes really that, badly. That was really good. Go on, I was watching it. No, I mean, a lot of it, I think, comes down to kind of personality in a way. And so Alex only picked players that he knew would be there from when he needed them mm. at their absolute most. And there's a huge difference, you know, to players that are really good when you're winning and the players that are good when you need them to get you something. And I thought, Sir Alex, he'd look you in the eye and he would only pick you because you knew be, he, you'd be there for him mm. in that moment. And I think, I look at this artist, I, lo I love them. There's so many amazing players. I just think they need one or two that, when the chips are down, who's going to get us out of trouble here? Who is that guy? They're all great players, young guys, super personality, but you need somebody that'll drag you through when, when you're struggling. Mm. Um, and, and, and I think that they'll have to find one or two. I think they're all kind of growing together at an amazing rate, but I just think they need a guy. Mm. And I think that comes down to personality. That's not so much about playing. It's about, you know, are you there in the crucial yeah. moment? It's such yeah. a different thing. You know something as well, Kels, I've got to say, but you, with Flo there mentioning the fans and that, one thing what the United team had at that time, that's why we talk about Fergie time and stuff, because the fans genuinely got behind them and got them through it. When, I, when you look and see the amount of Arsenal fans that left at that time and you're looking around, that again can be very demoralising for you because as a, for Arsenal, and it should be for that team, for the last, last two seasons, it's only been progression with this team. Yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't lose against Bayern. They came back in a game where, remember what Bayern done to us before in the Champions League? The first time Arsenal were back in, what, 14 years? They came back in that game. The players, these players, as much as they need experience on the pitch, they need the fans to stay with it because it seems like they're with it when it's going brilliantly. But for them to leave like they did, with Arsenal as well, how many times have Arsenal won in the last minute this season? It was really sad to see because then you're thinking, 
they genuinely believe that that's it for a team that are two points behind in, in, a, in a title race that they've really done brilliantly to stay in Kells. I was really disappointed and sad to see that. What did Alan Shearer text you? He texted me and said, is there a fire drill? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, and obviously Newcastle won, so he was on top form, but it, he's right. You know, what, that's when the players needed, needed the most. They're going to be needed between now and the end of the season as well. Let's take a look at what they, they've all got between the, the three of them, between now and the end of the season. I mean, you, you've sort of alluded to this earlier about Arsenal's tough running because they've got a North London derby in there. They've got Manchester United who could cause them, them problems, as we've seen. They might not be mm. able to, to control the game because yeah. certainly cause them, cause them problems in there. They've got Bournemouth, who are really well organised. Everton on the final day of the season, and yeah. who knows what they're, they're going to be playing for at, at that stage. There are some tricky games in there. Liverpool have still got to play Aston Villa. We saw yep. what, they did to, what they did to Arsenal. They've got Tottenham as well, and they've got that Merseyside derby, which is at Goodison Park. And even Fulham next is a, is a difficult one because... You saw in the performances against Arsenal, against Tottenham, you saw it in the, the performance at the weekend against West Ham, how good, how good Fulham are. And when you look at the Manchester City mm. games, that, that first game against Brighton, they're the last of the three to kick off that weekend. Mm. So it means that both Arsenal and Liverpool will have played twice mm. before Manchester United play again. Man in the City. Premier, uh, Manchester City play again in the, in the Premier League. Yeah. So, again, if we're talking about those psychological advantages, there's six points on the cards mm. for both Arsenal and Liverpool before Manchester City kick a ball. But you know the thing as well... In the Premier League. Yeah, but you know the thing as well, when you, when you look at it, Kells, Arsenal and Liverpool knew they have to win all their games anyway because even when you look at City now um, and you want to try and stay with them so as... You know, they might go to... Somewhere like Fulham, you don't know what you're going to get from a Fulham at the moment, or a Wolves. And, and neither of you two are backing Arsenal to, to get through, are you, in, in those second legs of the quarterfinals in the Champions League? I just think it's advantage Bayern. I think Arsenal can get through. I think they've got definitely got the players to do that. They showed enough in the first game that they, they could hurt them. But playing against an experienced team like Bayern in this in this competition, I think it's a it's a it's a, it's a big ask. But it's one that I don't think is too far for Arsenal. What makes you think PSG can turn it around as well against Barca? I just don't think Mbappe's going to play as bad as he did in the first game. He didn't get into it, didn't he? I, don't think, I think he had two shots, none on target. That's not the normal killing Mbappe that we know. So if he just jumps it up a few percent, I think he changes the game. He's Let, that good. Let's have a look at your predictions then, Peter. You're, you're going for Barca, not PSG. Yeah, the, that's the only change, really. I think City get through. I think, uh, I think Bayern um, will, will, will have too much for, for Arsenal. I just think Paris are they, flat to deceive. I think they, um, they huff and puff. And listen, they've got one of the best players in the world, but their Barca kept him really quiet in the, in the first leg. And I think um, back at the new Camp, I think they'll, they'll do the job. And a very quick one on Liverpool as well. A shock result for them at home to Atalanta. What a shame. What, what chance do you give them? Yeah, it was a shame, wasn't it, to see that happen. Um, I, I just don't think that they're going to be able to go through now. If this, we said before, if this tie was at Anfield, the second, second leg, I would be very, very um, silly to go against them with what their history has been like in Europe because that place mm. is, a, is a cauldron. But 3-0 and then having to go away to Atlanta, I think it's an uphill task. That. Oh, yeah, I, I thought the issue was just the, the performance. I thought Atalanta were, the, were much the better side. I think chances-wise, they could have had more. It was a real off day for Liverpool. Um, obviously, you think, the, would, what would they do? I mean, will they rest players or, you know, and accept their medicine or do they go That's for the it thing, and play everyone? you go all in on the league and just go second string? What, what would you do? Well, that's the issue. I've heard people talking about it recently, just saying, you know, let, let, let's write it off uh, and, and, and go all in for the league. But I don't think Jurgen Klopp will do that. I don't think Liverpool will do that. And if, if, if any club can turn a deficit like that round, we've seen it before in Europe, haven't we? They that will Liverpool. still believe. Well, that's... Theo's former club, Arsenal, beaten and couldn't score. Mm. And the same question has come up again. Is it anything to do with them not having an out-and-out -out goal scorer? Um... They can, of course, they can win a title. Manchester City won titles without an out and out goal scorer. They then brought in Haaland, and I think they've got better. I do think that Arsenal will be better with a number nine that can go and score a lot of goals. Of course, I do. However, they could still win a league without it. At the moment, Gabriel Jesus is, is, is that person up front. And again, he's got flaws in his game. I really like him as a player, but he's got flaws in his game as well. Uh, his finishing um, is, is OK. I mean, in this situation here, Steve, I mean, this, if I just forward it slightly, 
This is a left-footed finish. You've got all the space in the world. As soon as that comes onto your left foot, you're bending it in that corner. It is pretty straightforward and simple. We forward it on, and he decides to take it on his right foot. All of a sudden, when he's about to hit it, he's got nowhere to it. All of this side of the goal, he's got nowhere to it, and this is the only side a defender's coming to block, and all of a sudden, he makes what should have been an easy chance going early on your left foot into a hard chance going late on your right foot. And I think with Jesus as well, at times, he overcomplicates it. Like there, for instance, he takes a touch where you could, yes, first time, Again, he's not naturally left-footed, but we're talking about a Premier League winner here who's mm. played for Brazil, who knows the finish. But it's just one of those things he overcomplicates at times. Again, I think he puts himself in some fantastic positions. Here, I feel like he's probably... He's, again, you don't really see many goals, headed goals from Jesus. And I feel like he's probably looking for someone to probably get the tap in there. He has played in different positions as well for Arsenal at this moment in time. He's played out on the left and trying to find that position. I think mean, Havertz has been in the middle a bit more often, but again, he's puts himself in some fantastic situations mm. where you'd expect someone of his quality to probably get a bit, few more goals, I'd say. Yeah, and that was this is these clips are yesterday, Steve. Um, that was a, a huge miss at the, at the back post. This is something that really frustrates me, though. I mean, if you're a centre forward and you're trying to make a run. Odegaard here is absolutely desperate to play this ball here. I would have he loved can... to play with Odegaard. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. But, but what is he doing at the moment? He's standing offside. He should be in, in sort of this position here, on the blind side of the defender, just about to make a lovely curled arch run, either straight in behind here or in front of the defender, staying onside and then in on goal. He's standing offside. I mean, this is... I used to go to bed dreaming of this position. I'm sure yeah, yeah. you did as well. Yeah. Oh, my word, I've Lived got a free this. midfielder <laughs> with his head up in possession of the ball about to play me in. And he goes and stands offside. Erdegaard has got no other alternative but to just ignore him and he has to cut back and then play a safe ball wide. I mean, that is the most basic, basic of things, uh, uh, you know, that you'd ever teach a, 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 a centre-forward. This is him again here. He's in an offside position. Burst a gut to get back onside because if you win it, this is a fantastic position to be in. But what does he do? <laughs> he's looking across the whole line here, the whole line, and he still manages to, to, to run offside. I mean, that's a big chance, Steve. No one will put that down as a chance. No one will say, oh, he's, he's missed a chance. That should have been a massive chance. If he gets onside, he makes a run across. And all of a sudden, a good attacking opportunity, he's offside, so it doesn't even become an opportunity in the first place. So, yes, he's a fantastic player. I do love watching him. I love his work rate. He's got a great touch. But I tell you what, he's got a lot to learn about centre-forward play, and, mainly off the ball. And can they solve that? I mean, they're going to have to win every game now to, to stay in this race. You're a former club. Can they solve that in, in the running? I think... Um... I'm not sure if they can solve that in the, in the running right now. I think they need to go back to what they've been doing best is outscoring teams. They've lived off not having a, a proper number nine, as you say. Having Havertz has definitely surprised a, a lot, me being one. But they, you look at their goal tally right now, they're playing in a style without actually a recognised centre forward, should we just say. Yes, I agree with you. I feel like they will invest in that player. And that player could have well have been playing the opposite side. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, it's one of those where I feel Are like... Are you talking about Ollie Watkins? I am indeed, because okay. I feel like he's the sort of player that Arsenal would look to. And other players, which I'm sure we'll speak about at some point. He's improving, isn't he? He is. He, and as well, which I really like about Ollie Watkins as well, he's one of these players that, if you look at his sort of style, you think he's a winger. He reminds me, and it's probably one of the best compliments I'm going to give him, but like a Thierry Henry, who played out on the left a lot, always liked to, he wanted to be a forward, but drifted out on the left. I think Ollie Watkins, he did at times stay on the left-hand side, and now he's found himself in a position centrally where... Emery has developed that side of it and he's such a threat on the counter-attack. Yeah. Well, his goal did the pace. damage to see this in the end, didn't it? Yeah, it did. We'll have a look at it here. Um, he had a great chance in the first half where he hit the inside of the post, but here's Aston Miller winning the ball. And he's onside. He knows how to run. He knows how to time a run. Um, and this type of finish now, I feel as if this is coming into his game. This is a your type of finish, uh, Theo. I remember you dinking a few players. But now he's, he's, choosing, he's choosing the right types of finishes. And we spoke to him after the, the game as well uh, to try to pick his brains. He's really articulate, really thinks about it now. Look at him slow down. He slows his run. And then another burst of speed. And I bet you it's just before he's, he, he goes to dink it there. He probably thinks about, I'm going to dink it around there, I would say. 
he was he was sort of telling us that it was about there when when I thought, yeah, goalkeepers coming out, defenders on my side, I can take them both out with with one little dink, and uh, and it's a beautiful finish. And that's a player who's playing with confidence who already knows the picture. Talking about Cole Palmer, he knows the picture before it even happens. It's a player who's I don't think he scored any penalties, has he? Even no this season. No. no. And. We're debating on if Harry Kane's injured, who can we rely on? Look, we got blessed with so many players right now. So, mm. And he's playing at the top of his game. And it will be refreshing to see if he stays at the club You were well. talking there about his improvement. We've, we've just looked at his movement before Unai Emery was Aston Villa manager. Yeah. And then after. And there's a big difference. Well, yes. I mean, Theo just mentioned there, we always sort of saw him as, as a player that liked drifting out wide. Uh, this is season 2021. We just fast forward it a season. Yes, uh, we are back again, man. We are back again. Today is the D Day. Uh, Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. Let's see how it goes. It's the day that we all have been waiting for. Remember, the first leg was 2 2. Hmm. Although Arsenal played well, but we cost ourselves the goals. Yes, um, if you check the first goal, it was. I, I, I think Arsenal should take the blame. And the second goal, you know, uh, shouldn't have be. But yes, let's put that behind now. Let's face the reality for tonight. Um, Bayern Munich is not be um, an easy team, even though they are not doing that excellently well in um, Bundesliga right now. But still, you know, this is Bayern Munich. We must have that in mind. That these guys are not easy to beat like that. Remember the last time we met with the, um, with them. Arsenal have played uh, Ashte Villa and we lost. Yes, we lost. Why Bayern Munich have played since. You know, let me see. Let me check their standing. As you can see here. You know. They've won, you know, they've won their last game as well. You know, Arsenal lost their last game. Hmm. If you check their table right now, uh, Bayern Munich is sitting on 63 points. You know why uh, Leverkusen is just right there at the top of the table at 79 points. You know, so if you ask me, Bayern is not doing well this season. So the best time for Arsenal to beat Bayern Munich or remove them from Champions League is this season. If you can't do it now, you might probably not be able to do it forever. Yeah, you know, if you check Premier League, ah, Arsenal is currently on 71 points. Man City is 73 points. That's two points ahead of us. And everyone have played 32 games out of the three horse race Man City Arsenal Liverpool so Liverpool is 71 Arsenal is 71 while Man City is 73 um, with the way the table is standing Arsenal still have the chance to to be on top but you must be prayerful or be hopeful that Man City will lose or rather draw but what about Arsenal we still have tough, tough games to go. We have Chelsea that is picking up right now. We have uh, Tottenham. We have Man United. Mm. But let's focus on today. Guys, what do you think? Do you think Arsenal can go through Bayern Munich? Let us know. For me, I'm a bit worried though. Yes, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know. Because the last game we played actually dreaming so i just hope arsenal revive the confidence back again today you know if they fail to win today it's going to affect their confidence heavily but i'll leave this for you guys tell us on the comment section what's your take do you think arsenal will beat by munich tonight we'll go through let's take it from there thank you very much for watching subscribe to our channel and uh, like and leave a comment we like to read your comment because we are here to learn let's hear from you as well take care and bye for now